Good morning or afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Billet. I'm a sales engineer with Looker at Google Cloud. I'm going to be your host and moderator for today's presentation. Today with me, we also have Patrick Smith, who is a game machine learning solution lead with Google Cloud. Patrick will talk about how to quickly build ML models on top of gaming data, also doing this with a limited data science knowledge and really how to take, query, take advantage of the scalability of BigQuery. Um, we'll also talk about how you can use Looker to start democratizing your data across the entire organization and really enable all different types of users. Before we get started today, a quick uh, few logistic and housekeeping items. Um, we'll have 15 minutes of Q&A at the end. There is a question and answer section at the bottom. You can add your questions in there and then hit the send button to post them. Uh, we'll do our best to get to all of the questions, but we may not have enough time at the end of our presentation. Uh, we are also recording the presentation and we'll send that over after if you want to share this with colleagues or, or others. Um, and the windows on your screen are all customizable, meaning that you can minimize them, you can maximize them. If you want to see our faces or the presentation uh, bigger, you can just move those things around. Um, if you accidentally close anything, there is a toolbar at the bottom. Just hit the window that you would like to reopen up, and that will probably bring that back to the front of your screen. Uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and get started, and I'm going to flip this back over to Patrick to kick us off. Yeah, thanks for the introduction, Chris. Um, yeah, hi, everybody. As Chris mentioned, um, Patrick Smith. I am an ML specialist and ML solutions lead for Google Cloud Gaming. Um, so I do everything related to AI ML uh, in the game space. Um, and today, I mean, everything we're talking about today is revolving around game data. And for those on the, on the webinar here, I'm sure there's a lot of folks in the game space who know that um, the world is changing, free to play, um, and various other ways of reaching the consumer are are becoming somewhat of the norm, and with that comes a changing dating uh, data model. Excuse me. Um, so, if we look at that from a sense of how do we manage that, um, it becomes increasingly more important to know exactly who your player is, reach those players, and uh, monetize those players, and really retain those players. If you think about a player funnel, um, we want to bring people not just from purchasers to um, users, but from users to devoted users, and devoted users to um, players that play every single day of the week. Um, I've seen a lot of trade uh, back and forth between both uh, mobile studios and AAA studios at this point. Um, the AAAs and the um, console and PC publishers learning from the mobile studios and vice versa on really how to uh, understand the customer. Now, since we're talking about BigQuery and Looker today, um, where that comes in is really managing the entire uh, data pipeline here. So everything from understanding uh, or the streaming data that's coming in from your game, um, using that to enhance real-time game experiences, um, improving general player experience. It's a give and take, right? So it's going back and forth between whatever your uh, game server is and, um, and your analytics platform. And that's where uh, BigQuery and Looker really come in and can help here. So uh, we all know that games generate a, a ton of data. Um, it can be everything from in-app purchases. We can track what users are doing in a you know a standard uh, kind of AAA type title. Um, that might be uh, down to a point level of what they uh, the actions they might be taking in a game. We also know things about them from outside of the game, building player profiles and uh, things of that nature. That all comes together in a sense where we want to have one unified view of the player. Um, so that we can better uh, cater to them, whether that be from you know a marketing and sales perspective or whether that be from just really making a more enjoyable game. So um, again, getting back to the core here is, uh, is big data and looker, or a big query and looker. Um, so what, uh, what we're going to be talking about today, and Chris will show you a little more uh, later on, is using both BigQuery and Looker as your unified data platform. And, and the key here is not just a data platform that can be used by data scientists, but a data platform that can be used by everybody on your data team, um, whether that be your marketing analysts or um, folks who with very limited technical knowledge. Um, end to end here, this is all integrated. And so it becomes extremely easy to enable every part of your business uh, with BigQuery and uh, 
and Looker. Um, so we handle everything here. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the scalability and availability of BigQuery and Looker across the globe, um, pipelines and things of that nature. Um, but our goal here is to make uh, your end-to-end -end analytics process a lot easier. So um, we talked about this a little bit, um, but really the goal here is to unlock uh, insights into your player, which gets to the core of what I want to talk about, uh, which is BigQuery. So for those of you who aren't familiar with BigQuery, um, it's Google Cloud's uh, big data, uh, data warehouse offering. Um, really a wonderful, wonderful place to capture your um, player analytics data, your game data, anything that you'd eventually want to analyze downstream um, to better understand uh, the way that your game's uh, performing. So um, it's really as large as you want it. We know the games generate a lot of data, uh, gigabyte to petabyte scale here. It's encrypted, it's durable, fully managed. Um, and one of the uh, my favorite parts about it is it integrates um, analytics and machine learning right on top. Um, so we have a um, product integrated into BigQuery called BigQuery ML, um, which is BigQuery Machine Learning. Um, it allows you and your uh, your developers, your analysts, whoever's using BigQuery to uh, run machine learning models using standard SQL. Uh, the great thing about this, and we actually just released these features uh, a couple days ago, is that you can integrate into our greater uh, ML AI product system via BigQuery. So not only can you do a clustering model or regression model or something of that nature in SQL in BigQuery, you can take that even further and um, access whether it be a custom TensorFlow model that you had deployed or our auto ML product, um, which is a great way to do uh, simple, fast and easy machine learning uh, without any machine learning knowledge. All of that is now available via BigQuery ML. And so this is really, really making it easy for uh, everybody on your team to have access to extremely powerful models for whether you're looking at, hey, maybe I want to understand the different types of players so that I can manage matchmaking or I can manage ranking, or maybe I want to cater different promotions to different play styles. Uh, you can all do that from BigQuery and from the centralized um, BigQuery console. And as Chris will show you, this integrates seamlessly with Looker. So you can also create dashboards, you can do visualizations, you can do all of that while accessing this underlying machine learning capability seamlessly with little to no code whatsoever. And of course, uh, BigQuery wouldn't be what BigQuery is if it wasn't um, you know, globally scalable and available and secure. Um, so we support all uh, global uh, security and durability standards uh, to make sure that because we're dealing with sensitive player data here, um, that we're holding it to the highest standard. And with that, I'm going to pass it off to Chris, and he's going to talk a little bit about the uh, the actual integration between the two platforms here and how uh, you can build this end-to-end -end pipeline with BigQuery and Looker. Awesome. Thanks, Patrick. Um, as we dive into Looker here a little bit, I think one of the most important things to, to keep in mind is that Looker really is taking advantage of the underlying horsepower of BigQuery and any integrations that it supports, like BQML, as an example. So as we're talking about you know, the different users that might be interacting with the data, um, you have the ability to get down to that row-level detail if you need to. But you also have the ability to look at things at a 10,000 aggregate foot view. Some of the key value props here from a, from a looker standpoint, right, are going to be that real level data and taking advantage of everything that's available in the data warehouse via that in database architecture. Looker itself is a very scalable, lightweight web application itself. So nothing you need to download or install to your local devices. Looker has a, a semantic layer as well, where you can define transformation at the time of query. This is really going to be where a lot of the interaction with BQML also happens, allowing data scientists or even data analysts, people that are not necessarily familiar with maybe some of the more complex data science workflows and languages, to start interacting with that machine learning directly through SQL and into the tool that they're already using beyond having to jump to a couple different places. Um, beyond that, Looker also has an extensive RESTful API, a large suite of visualizations, and then there also is multi-cloud support as well, depending on what other databases you may want to join in with your BigQuery data, depending on if that is a value prop. In terms of who we're ultimately 
aiming to serve here. We're really aiming to serve the entire organization. So the way I like to think about what Looker is from a data perspective is it's really like Google Earth for your data. If I'm that executive, right, and I want to have that 10,000 foot view of the business and really just understand what's going on, that's great. But if I'm a monetization manager or a marketing manager and I want to dive down into that street level or that row level detail to really understand why something is happening, that's where Looker is going to start to provide you a lot more flexibility to answer not only the questions of what's going on in the business, but why are we seeing that trend or anomaly? The other thing that you'll see at the bottom is we have this notion of what we call Looker blocks. And Looker blocks are templatized analysis either for a specific data source or for some kind of just general analysis that you might want to do. So in the case of gaming, we have a gaming analytics block, which comes with a pre-templatized data model and a number of pre-can dashboards that you can roll out directly on top of your data schema. The idea here is really to decrease time to value. And you can see that there are other blocks that also can be applied within the gaming realm, things like A-B testing, retention analysis, or sessionization. The idea here really, right, is to just get you up and running. These are not necessarily meant to be the end-all state, but they probably will serve about 80% of what you need. When I dive into the demo a little bit uh, later in the presentation, we'll be taking a deeper dive specifically into the gaming analytics block, and we'll also be looking at the BQML block and how we can pair those things together to create a very comprehensive gaming story. In terms of how users might interact with Looker, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of people on the webinar are probably familiar with both BigQuery and Looker in some sense. But one thing that we, we hear very often is, you know, Looker is, is just a dashboarding tool. And that is absolutely a, a starting point for a lot of different people or organizations. But there are many things that people tend to do after that on top of that data model that they've created. Um, some of that may be empowering folks that are not data analysts, people like executives, to start slicing and dicing and self-serving on the data and answering questions the way that I've kind of mentioned before. Or this could be actually using Looker's API to power some kind of workflow that could be automated or it could involve a person. So an example of that would be maybe within Google AdWords, I want to turn on or turn off a keyword ad buy based on some kind of threshold that we've defined within the Looker data model. That could be something that is programmatically done via APIs, or that could be something that is done by a user. So just an example of how that could be extended to go a little bit beyond just standard dashboarding. When we talk about those Looker blocks again and take a little bit of a deeper dive here, specifically into the gaming block, there are really three or four different things that, that we want to look at here. The first is going to be an overview and, 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 and really a, a summarization of all the most important KPIs and metrics from a gaming perspective. And that's going to be kind of your executive view. We also provide a monetization view, which looks at in-app purchases. It also looks at ad revenue, things along those lines. And then we also have some dashboards and analysis around the user journey. So how are players actually traversing through the game? Are they getting stuck on certain levels? Is there some way that we can actually optimize that experience so that they come back to the game more frequently or continue just playing the game? The one that isn't listed here is there is a suite of dashboards also around retention and user acquisition, which, as we know, is super important given the current kind of ecosystem of, of where we are in the world. In terms of accelerating your time to insight here, because you have that centralized data model, you start to provide governance out to all of the users that may be consuming this data. So when somebody is talking about, you know, the revenue from in-app purchases, whether they're an executive or someone all the way on the ground floor, everyone is going to be talking about the same definition for that metric. So it's really allowing people to start thinking and being on the same page, but at the same time also providing them the agility to slice and dice and answer the questions that they need without having to go back and necessarily munge data or pull data from a new system, since it will all be readily available within a data warehouse, in this case, BigQuery. 
as I mentioned before, one of the things that that we talk about quite a bit here at Looker is this idea of connecting the data to additional workflows outside of the dashboard. So what very often happens is we say, okay, I got to a dashboard. This is great. This tells me what I need to know about the business, but what am I going to do with that information? And we want to streamline that process, building those workflows directly into Looker or directly into the application that the user is already taking advantage of. So that could be connecting with AdWords in the example that I gave before. This also could be in more of a data science context, potentially connecting to different notebooks that people are working in. That could be in Python, that could be in R, in the tool of their choosing, really allowing them to pull these governed data definitions directly into their predictive models. The idea here is there is not a limited number of what these connections could be. You really can connect to any system that has uh, the ability to connect via APIs or something like webhooks and start automating those workflows that may come after you discover what you need within the data itself. If we go ahead and jump forward here, what we're going to talk about now is what the, the Looker and BigQuery picture looks like a little bit more together now, and what this is really going to provide you specifically within the context of gaming. Now, one of the things that we've already talked about here is the ability to make it very easy to query your information. BigQuery is going to make it very simple to query all of that data because first off, it's going to allow you to just dump all that information directly into one place and then easily define some of the transformation and, and the schema that you need to ultimately do the analysis that you want. Additionally, right, you're going to be able to manage petabyte scale data sets. So as you continue to roll out new games, um, you can basically just add a new schema or add that into a new data set within BigQuery, and you will be able to query all that information jointly. One of the other things that I think is very important is as different gaming and companies different gaming companies, excuse me, start to roll out new games, one of the, the large barriers that we've seen is creating new analysis every time for a new game can be very time consuming. By using Looker's blocks and the reusability of Looker's data model, what we are then able to do is as you roll out a new game, we can apply that template to the game and give you that, say, 80% of the analysis that you might want directly out of the box so that we're really decreasing that time to value. And you can use that common logic across all your different games to analyze them in the same way and understand how those are performing. Of course, everything is going to be able to be extended and changed depending on what you need to analyze for that specific game. But really, once again, all about that time to value and really getting started quickly. I think it's also worth noting here that as BigQuery continues to develop new integrations into the product, so like what Patrick was mentioning with respect to the other ML tools that can now be used through BQML, Looker is also working to support all of those integrations so that they can be natively used within the platform itself. So things like the BI app engine, if you're familiar with that, which is an in-memory data set within BigQuery, that is something that Looker will support here very shortly, allowing for just some quicker slicing and dicing depending on the, uh, on the experience that the user is looking for. If we jump forward here, I think this is, this is a super important slide especially as we start talking about some of the larger enterprises. Um, a lot of the enterprises would like to have everything housed within one governed cloud, and that is the benefit of using Looker and BigQuery and then a few of the other products that you see here from a storage or from a data transformation and flow perspective. Here you can see that everything, whether it be Looker, BigQuery, Dataflow, Data Proc, Cloud DLP, or Cloud Storage, those all reside within the GCP ecosystem, and it's all governed and controlled by GCP's security and uh, Google's best practices. But on the other hand, you will see on the right side that we do have that free zone. I think it's really important to note that, you know, we understand that as companies are making migrations across different clouds or deciding what tools they want to use, there's a very high likelihood that everything won't be standardized in one cloud or in one database immediately. So from the Looker perspective, you can always connect 
other data warehouses and contain that information within the same dashboards as the information coming from BigQuery to make sure that you can get that 360 degree view of the business at that point in time. But conversely, if you already have other tools and want to connect those to BigQuery, that is also possible. So we really wanna provide that flexibility, allowing you to get the immediate value out of the platform as needed. If we jump to the next slide here, there are some customers that are using both Looker and BigQuery together. The most notable, which we'll, we'll talk about a little bit here, is going to be King. Um, they've been using Looker and BigQuery for quite some time together. They also have started to build some of those custom um, custom integrations that we mentioned before, so not just necessarily dashboarding. And with that, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna transition over and we're gonna jump into a demo of both Looker and BigQuery here. So just give me one moment to spin up my screen share. All right. So when we're here in the Looker application, the first thing that you're going to notice is everything here is entirely web-based. So as I mentioned before, nothing that you need to download or install to your local device. We're using HTML5 here, so everything is going to render for the device that you bring to the table or for the screen size that you bring to the table. Now, you will notice up here at the top that there are four different functional areas, and those in some sense are going to delineate the different users that we might have within the application. Browse is really gonna be the whole content management suite within Looker. Explore is really gonna be that self-service environment. Develop is gonna be the underlying data model. So in the simplest way, this is where we're gonna tell Looker, how do we wanna write SQL against that underlying BigQuery database? And then the fourth tab over is gonna be the admin tab. This is where I'm gonna do all my standard admin functions, adding new database connections, adding new users, things along those lines. Now, as I scroll through this daily pulse dashboard, this does coincide with that gaming block that I mentioned before. And you'll see that we're gonna get a top line view of all of the most important metrics and KPIs within our business. So we'll look at things along the lines of user acquisition, we'll have some retention metrics, We'll also do a little bit in terms of monetization there. And if we scroll back up to the top, we can kind of get a general sense for how everything is performing across the board. Now, everything within Looker is meant to be interactive and meant to be a starting point. So you can see I have a number of filters that I might interact with up here at the top, depending on how I might want to drill down into the data, maybe the date range that I want to look at. And the thing that you want to keep in mind here and, and that I'm going to keep hitting on is that everything that you see here is living on top of BigQuery. We are not storing any of this data within Looker. We are leveraging the power of BigQuery to run these analytic workloads and and that's also helping us to see the performance that we're going to see with some of these queries because we're working on top of a massive data set. So now as an end user, one of the things that I may want to do is I may want to start taking a, a deeper dive into this data and I might want to do a little bit of, of actual exploration. So maybe I'm curious to learn more about these uh, 28 or excuse me, these 12,000 installs that we had today. So what I can do is because, once again, we're sitting directly on top of BigQuery, I can click on that number and I can actually drill down into that. In this case, we've defined that drill to look at things by version number. Now, maybe in this case, I'm doing a little exploration and I know that uh, version 1.10.8, it looks like we still have three users on there, but maybe I know there's some kind of serious security vulnerability and I'd like to notify those users. What I can always do is I can say explore from here. And what that is going to do is that's going to pull me into Looker's self-service environment where I can start slicing and dicing the data. What we're seeing on the left side here are a number of different fields and tables that I have the options of selecting columns from. So these are essentially all the different data attributes that I have available to me. Now, you can curate what this looks like for your users so that if your database and maybe the names of the columns are not very clean, you can go in and regroup these items. You can rename them and 
make them look very familiar and curated to those end users so they feel comfortable slicing and dicing and ultimately answering their own questions. You can see we can also add things like descriptions to these just to make them more uh, readily available to those users so they actually know what they're slicing and dicing by. In this case, uh, what I may want to do is I may want to create a user list for, let's say, those users that are on that current version. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter down to only people that are on that version. And you'll see it added a filter up here at the top. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to start pulling some of these fields off. So what I'm going to do is I'll remove these columns. I'm going to bring in my user ID. I'm going to bring in the date that they first came into the platform. And then let's also look at the lifetime value of those customers as well. Because we are directly connected to BigQuery, we can actually see what's going to be processed within the application as well, directly up here at the top. This is something you can restrict different users by. So if you want some users to be able to run larger queries than other users, you do have the flexibility and admin perspective to be able to tailor who can ask and answer what questions of the data. But I'm going to go ahead and hit the Run button. And what that's going to do on the back end is that's actually going to execute a SQL statement against my BigQuery database. So in this case, if we were to imagine you know, I was a non-technical user, this is the SQL statement that I did not have to write to go ahead and actually return that given result set here. Now, it looks like the LTV of those customers is not great. But in this case, maybe I still want to send them a quick email to go ahead and actually have them update what version that they're running on. This is where that notion of integration and what do I want to do once I've actually found the data becomes very powerful. So I can come up here to this gear, and of course, I could ultimately maybe create a visualization out of this information and save and add it to a dashboard or save it as an individual report. We call those looks. But I also might want to shoot that over to another system. So if I come up there and hit the Send button, I can choose where I want to send this information. And this is really only a subset of some of the integrations that you might see. So in this case, maybe I actually want to shoot this over to our marketing platform. We're going to go ahead and send them an email and prompt them to update their version. And maybe we'll incentivize them with you know, some free credits within the app or something like that as well. We also could send this over to something like a Google Cloud Storage bucket and directly uh, ship that information and kick off some kind of workflow downstream if we wanted. The idea here, right, is that you are not limited in where you send this data or what you do with this data. It's really to start enabling and allowing you to do that next item or take that next action so that you don't have to go to another system or another place. As I go ahead and jump back now, maybe, I, maybe I'm a monetization manager, and we're going to need to take a deeper look into, say, some of our monetization metrics. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up a specific monetization dashboard that goes much deeper than that original daily pulse that we were originally looking at. Here you can see I have a lot of the same levers to slice and dice and ultimately self-serve from this perspective. But as we start to scroll down, you'll see that we get much deeper into specifics about the different areas that we are monetizing within this specific gaming platform. So whether that's the in-app purchases themselves, whether that's ad revenue that we're generating from the ads we're posting in the game, or even things as we scroll down to the bottom here, talking a little bit more about how we might predict revenue. And this is where BQML is going to come into the picture within this context of um, the gaming block or within the BQML block. We have two different visualizations that we're taking advantage of here that are using BQML. First off on the right here, we're just predicting what our revenue is actually going to be based on some of those in-app purchases over time. But then on the left side, what you're seeing here is we're actually predicting what customers have the highest propensity to purchase within our app. So from here, I can actually start interacting with this as a non-technical user. So in the same way, if I click on this chart title, what that's going to do is that's going to pull me over into the Explore section once again. Now here, what we're doing is we've already run a BQML model 
on top of this data. And I'm specifying that I would actually like to see the users who have a propensity to spend of over 65%. Once I'd actually gotten that list, very similarly to what I just showed in that last example, I can take that list and maybe I want to directly pump that over into some kind of marketing platform and I want to kick off a workflow by which maybe since we know these users are already very likely to purchase, maybe I want to offer them some kind of incentive or I want to give them some free credits or give them some free item within the game to kind of get them to purchase a little more quickly. The idea here, right, is that you can now start to leverage that machine learning as a non-technical user, but even more important than that, you can start to leverage that directly within the same platform that you're already working within. So just as an example, and we'll go a little bit deeper into Looker's modeling layer here in one moment. What I would have to do today, if I wanted to run one of these BQML predictions, is I would jump over into BigQuery and I would run some kind of SQL statement that might run a prediction on, say, a model that I've created. In this case, it would be a game cluster model. I might specify, or I would have to specify, some input table that I'm creating. And then, you know, we could always visualize and represent that information in one system. The issue that you see here is that I'm jumping back and forth between the tool that my users are actually using to do analysis and some tool that I'm using, in this case, BigQuery, to run machine learning and more of the data science things. What, we'd really, what we've really strived to do here at Looker is streamline that all into one place within the Looker application. So if I jump over into Looker's modeling layer, and we're not going to go into too much depth here today, but you will notice right off the bat that this is a code-based layer. So this is going to be the layer that your developers or your data scientists, data analysts, those people that are familiar with SQL are going to be interacting with. But here is where I can actually start to directly build those BQML integrations right into my Looker data model. So here you can see I'm defining different tables that I might want to have as, say, a training input or, in this case, a testing input. But those same functions that you saw me just pulling up within the GCP console a moment ago within BigQuery, so example, an example would be they're creating a model right here. In this case, we're creating a logistical regression or maybe actually evaluating that model and specifying what we want the training input to be, or even looking at you know, something like the, the ROC curve as an example. Those things are now directly housed within Looker so that your data scientists, your data analysts, those people doing your data modeling don't have to jump back and forth between two different tools to actually see that information. Once those predictions and once those different analytics are actually run within Looker, you do have the ability to very much, as you've seen here, start displaying and interacting with that information at a non-technical user level. So someone that doesn't even necessarily know SQL can start interacting with this predictive data set. And maybe I want to get a little more flexible. Maybe I only care about people that are, you know, say 50%. I can go ahead and input that number hit the run button on the, on the right corner there. And what's actually going to happen under the hood is Looker is executing a SQL statement, rerunning that BQML model, and giving us a new prediction so that we can actually interact with that list, go ahead and take that back to our marketers and use that as necessary. So the idea here, right, is really to start enabling those end users to interact with a, the data, just for starters, but then in a more complex form, also the machine learning models that could be created within BigQuery. The only other thing that I want to make sure I keep coming back to here, right, is every query that you've seen me run is actually happening within BigQuery itself. So as you need to get down to that row-level detail or as you want to look at other attributes that are available to you, you have that ability to just start slicing and dicing on the left side. So what you'll see is as I start just selecting random objects here, 
Looker is going to be composing an optimized query for me. And as I select something from, say, a sessions table in this example, you're actually going to see that we're now going to join to that sessions table and, to, and provide that user that new column that they've requested. The idea here, right, is really that you're taking the SQL knowledge of, say, your smartest analyst or your data scientist, and you're starting to make that reusable for all of the users in your organization, regardless of their technical abilities. With that, I'm going to pass it back to Patrick, and we're going to dive into the, the Q&A here. And we'll start answering some of the, the first questions that we have available. Yeah, thanks, Chris. And thanks for a great overview there of showing how just closely Looker and BigQuery integrate and how they can help uh, help all of our gaming companies here really uh, optimize their workflows. Um, just to, to hit on one last thing that Chris mentioned there, um, one of the great things, um, and I encourage everybody in the call to, to take a look at our latest releases. Um, if you are familiar, if you're working in TensorFlow on the more in-depth side um, in your ML pipelines, or if you are using our AutoML product, which if you're not familiar, is a really wonderful, um, easy to use, straight, no ops um, way to create ML models. Um, all this integrates now back in with BQML, and by extension, you can feed that into your Looker pipeline. So depending on how in-depth you want to get, or how, or if you want to be no ops or, or super high level, um, it's extremely easy to integrate your analytics pipeline. And with that, uh, we will go to some questions. Um, so I'll take the first one here and read it off. Um, so the question is, I'm a live ops manager. How can I? use Looker to help me manage my game. Chris, I think that one's uh, for you. Yep. So in terms of how you might manage your game as a live ops manager, right? Um, one of the big things, and this actually coincides with BigQuery as well, is depending how real time you need that data, you do have the ability to stream that data into BigQuery or do very uh, near real time batches. As a live ops manager, you could actually run queries in Looker or have a dashboard that's auto refreshing, let's say every minute to make sure that your game is performing and is up and running the way that you expect. As, uh, as you see changes there, right? That's where that actionability piece is also very important. So we might actually see um, that live ops manager when he sees something go down in terms of a specific version or he sees that you know maybe a specific region isn't working very well, he can then kick off a workflow where maybe he's directly sending a message to someone on the ops team through Slack to make sure that they jump in and, and start looking at you know the GCP infrastructure to make sure everything is working the way they expect. Um, it really is about what is that next step that they want to take. But that real-time monitoring piece, I think, is very important for a lot of those, uh, those live ops folks. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, next question we have here are, what are the hosting options for BigQuery and Looker? Um, so BigQuery and Looker both are located, you can ha uh, have them in the same regions around the world, and we have numerous regions around. Uh, Chris, I don't know if you want to uh, get more in depth into the Looker availability. No, I mean, specifically all the, all the regions that GCP is going to host in, you know, we're going to allow you to host in as well. The main thing there is, you know, as you're supporting gaming customers that span across the entire world, right? You're going, or even your organization that spans across the entire world, you're going to be able to support um, your customers and your internal customers in a very performant way. Yeah, and we're constantly um, bringing new regions and new fiber links online. Um, so this is only getting better. Cool. Uh, what other Looker blocks are available for free? Chris, I think that's you. Yeah, so from a, from a Looker blocks perspective, um, we talked about four or five of them today. All Looker blocks are free across the board. So those are templatized analysis. Once again, um, they could be for a specific data source or for a very specific type of analysis that you might want to run. Or those could be even templatized API calls against uh, Looker's API. Those are all free. Um, and we'll actually send out some links to the Looker 
blocks repository after the webinar as well so that you guys can take a, a deeper dive into what what else is available beyond just some of the gaming specific items let's see um does looker uh have any other industry specific schemas other than for gaming Yes, we do. So there are a number of specific um, schemas. There are some for healthcare. There are also a few. So the thing with blocks that you want to keep in mind, and maybe I should clarify this a little bit, is um, blocks can also be comprised and put together to create more of a comprehensive solution for maybe an industry that doesn't exist. So as an example, um, gaming is a part of what I'm going to call media in general. And there are a number of other media blocks that can be tacked on to even the gaming block to extend that and, and verticalize it even more. So the answer is yes, there are other industries that are served. And we can also send out the, the link to all the different repositories that are available to you. Let's see here. Um, will Looker be part of the Google Cloud platform? So uh, yes, uh, eventually. Um, Looker is a part of GCP right now. I think that most people probably know that GCP was uh, purchased Looker about a year ago. We are in the middle of our integration path is the way I would put it today. But you can expect to see, yes, more tight knit integration um, as the future kind of continues. But on the other hand, I do want to mention that Looker does not have any plans to move away from multi-cloud support. So from that standpoint of you know being able to support other databases or other infrastructures that you may be using today, that is something that will not go away. Let's see here. Um, question about machine learning models integrated with bqml uh in the usage of the bi app engine so how are ml models integrated with bqml um i'll take this one as um how are the other gcp platform uh, ml models being in integrated with bqml um and i'll preface this by saying we can send out a uh, a post presentation link with this um, but just as of last week we released into beta integration between um, both deployed TensorFlow models in our um, AI platform, uh, AutoML and BQML. And so it's a, an available model class in um, BQML, and I won't get into the actual SQL at this point, um, but you're able to query. Um, so say you have an AutoML uh, classification model, you're able to use that as the back end in your BQL ML syntax and query it from there. Um, so let's say you're doing a workflow, you want to cluster players, determine what player type, you know, different player clusters and determine their types, and then maybe use that to feed into a classification model for player type. Uh, you can do that and then use AutoML as your back end. Or if you needed a more advanced model and you needed to query it from um, BQML, uh, you can deploy that in our AI platform, query that TensorFlow model from BQML, and those will connect. Um, and we can, uh, like I said, we can send out something after this uh, with some of the specific syntax around that. And looks like we have one more here. Um, how long does it take to get up and running with BigQuery and Looker? Well, on the BigQuery side, pretty easy. Um, BigQuery is designed to be uh, extremely easy and no ops. Um, it's fully managed zero ops uh, data warehouse. So really, all you need to do is log on to the GCP platform, go into the console, uh, spin up a BigQuery instance, and you can start streaming in as much data, streaming or loading, as much data as you want. Uh, and, I mean, it's virtually, uh, it's, uh, virtually unlimited, and it's available everywhere. So it's really just go in, spin something up. It's designed to be no ops and extremely simple. Chris, and then you can mention how Looker integrates into that. Yeah, so, so from the Looker perspective, very similar, right? Um, the only difference is you would, you would need to reach out to your Looker rep or your contact to get set up with a Looker instance. It also can be purchased through the marketplace on GCP, so that's worth mentioning. But the idea is definitely, yeah, within you know a day or two, you can already start getting value out of Looker and BigQuery, especially if you're taking advantage of uh, blocks, then you can you know really, really decrease that time to value. 
value. Um, I think that this segues really nicely into kind of a, a call to action or what next steps might look like for anyone that is interested. Um, we have a couple resources that you can see here on this last slide where you can go to find more information on the presentation that we gave today and then specifically a little more information on Looker. But another great avenue is if you already are connected with your GCP reps or with your Looker reps, um, just talk to them about wanting to get starting, get started, excuse me, with BigQuery and Looker, and they will be able to point you in the right direction um, and get you started with both platforms. Um, there are some some very interesting uh, joint propositions going on that kind of help you get started with an analytics starter pack today. So with that, I think uh, that will actually conclude our uh, presentation for today. Um, thank you for joining. And as we mentioned, um, we will be sending out some resources. I neglected to mention, and I should have mentioned before, that there also is a resource list within this platform on the left side. So there are a number of different things that you can pull up and open up and download, depending on whether you're more interested in kind of the BigQuery side, the Looker side, or the full joint proposition together. Um, but there will be a number of, of resources coming your way. So thank you, everyone.